good morning folks uh, welcome to my channel today we'll be taking a look at the various jargons that uh, the launch of uh, tvs's new bike which was much awaited the 310 akula has come up with uh, let's uh, go to the official website first so let's uh, start this uh, so this is the official website that's uh, www.tvsapache.com so as the company enumerates the engine of the bike is a spark ignition uh, si stands for that actually so it's a four stroke four valve and uh, single cylinder engine with liquid cooling and uh, reverse inclined configuration now let's come to the most used jargon which is reverse inclined in the drawing what i've done is i have drawn a very basic motorcycle in the center on the left of it there is conventional engine uh, setup and on the right of it that's the newest engine setup or for not newest it's uh, already existent in the international market it's the reverse cylinder engine configuration so we'll see what's the basic difference over here in uh, the conventional engine setup what happens is like uh, you have the exhaust valve in front of the engine and the inlet valve towards the rear end of the engine and hence the carburetor is placed behind the cylinder head and the exhaust manifold or for that matter the bent pipe is placed in the front of it same goes for the liquid cooled engine of uh, similar configuration that is the conventional engine configuration but in case of the apache 310 rr or for that matter bmw 310 series which has been recently launched what we have is uh, basically the exhaust is coming from the behind of engine that is the exhaust valve would be placed here and the inlet valve would be placed here that's uh, very much possible it's not a difficult task if you are building an engine from a scratch up and uh, hence the carburetor or for that matter the fuel injector is placed in front basic things which i assume which would have hindered the overall development of this particular kind of configuration in case if you take a look at the air cooled engine the exhaust area or the tube which uh, is uh, placed over here it uh, consumes very little space and uh, at the same time the carburetor is going to have a very large frontal area so in case if you are going to place the carburetor in front and uh, this particular section that is the bent pipe towards the back part of it or uh, make it a reverse cylinder engine what will happen is that the frontal area which would be very important in this particular configuration for the supply of air which would uh, pass through the fins to cool the engine won't be that abundant and that would really pose serious problem in cooling the engine and that was one of the case second thing was whenever there is a major accident of your motorbike what will happen is that this particular pipe that would cave in and that would damage the frontal part of the engine so in case if you simply have a bent pipe of your exhaust then the damage would be too little and you can simply get it welded or maybe replace it all together with a new unit but in case if you have a carburetor over here the repair would be including the skilled labor or for that matter uh, uh, entire replacement of set of for that matter the inlet manifold which is over here so that's going to be a costly repair we don't really have acres of space here so we can't really put all these uh, air filter box then uh, carburetor and other things in the conventional setup we will have to make arrangements so that it could be placed here or somewhere below the fuel tank which in turn would be affecting the range of your bike by reducing the amount of petrol that you can store in your petrol tank so these were the three basic difficulties now coming to the cooling problem that we have already discussed uh, that could be taken care of in case if you have a liquid cooled engine the radiator would be obviously in front of uh, the carburetor in case if you are doing uh, placing uh, making an arrangement like this so that could have been done but still since the engines were forward inclined so you have little space uh just take a look at even if you are replacing this engine in this particular motorcycle configuration you'll have little space here this particular place and then you'll have to make arrangements for air filter and other things so that was a serious difficulty and uh, those were the prime reasons why it was not in use till date or for that matter it was not in convention now coming to the BMW 310 series engine which has been employed in TVS Apache 310 RR both the problems both the major problems that were regarding the cooling through fins and the paucity of space in case of the lower engine as well as the 
air cooled engine that we have considered in example that has been taken care of the first problem that we have of cooling was uh, taken care of using the liquid cooling mechanism obviously through radiator which would be placed in front of the fuel supply unit and the second problem that is the paucity of space in case that was going to be placed over there that's taken care of by inclining the block towards the back side of the engine by certain degrees and that finally gave us the reverse inclined cylinder or for the, that matter the reverse inclined engine that we have coming back to the official uh, tvs apache page uh, the engine capacity is 312.2 uh, cubic centimeters that's basically the displacement when the piston moves from tdc to bdc and vice versa the maximum power is 25 kilowatt at 9700 engine rpm and these people like many other manufacturers do they have uh, put up their units in uh, for the trick uh, that basically the german unit which is uh, equal to 735.5 uh, watts and uh, when you compare it with uh, the bhp uh, one bhp is equal to 745.7 watts so in case if you divide 25 kilowatt with uh, 745.7 what you get uh, 33.5 35 bhp so that's a numerical tactic that they play with you the maximum torque is 27.3 newton meter at 7700 engine rpm bore is 80 mm and stroke is 62.1 mm so that's basically an over square engine and carburetor fuel injection is bosch closed loop efi now those of you who are unaware with uh, closed uh, loop and open loop system uh, let's get back to the board uh welcome back to the board <laughs> so here on the left side obviously we have the open loop and uh, on the right side we have the closed loop system now for uh, giving you a hint of it uh, the motorcycles uh, in indian market are using uh, both of it the open loop as well as the closed one uh, if you consider the royal enfield bikes which are using fuel injection unit they are uh, largely open loop even my continental gt has the open loop system in it and uh, if you take a look at it basically the input is like when you are switching on or whenever you are starting the bike the ecu takes control of the efi which is basically a combination of a fuel pump and the injector and that supplies fuel to the engine now in case if you are coming to the closed loop now the i will be i'll also be mentioning what are the difficulties of uh, having a open loop and what are the advantages of having a closed loop let's first uh, differentiate it uh, so in closed loop what you have is you have a feedback channel and uh, what happens is whenever uh, you give a input the ecu takes charge of the efi and that obviously supplies fuel to the engine now the engine is laced with lot of lot many sensors like anti knock sensors oxygen sensors and temperature sensor these sensor give a feedback to the ecu and then according to these feedbacks like if the oxygen is less or for that matter temperature is uh, low or high or if there is knocking in engine then the ecu accordingly controls the efi unit <coughs> sorry folks and uh, likewise the quantity of fuel is controlled now why it is important is like uh, since most of you or most of us have dreamt to go to le i have not <laughs> so in case if you are planning to go to a higher altitude then what happens is uh, the amount of oxygen decreases in the air that is present for your bike to breathe and uh, in that case if you are having a open loop system where you don't really have a feedback line there won't be any feedback of uh, what is the temperature what is the amount of oxygen that uh, is available for your engine to run uh, to operate upon and uh, that's why the whatever the preset value will be there from the company on that only the engine would be running and you may face difficulty if you are going to reach higher altitude but at the same time in case if you have a closed loop system which is available in this particular bike if you are having le uh, lesser amount of oxygen the feedback is given to the ecu and ecu attunes or uh, uh, it directs the efi accordingly to supply along uh, supply the fuel as per the requirement of the oxygen present in the atmosphere so that's what is the advantage of having a closed loop unit so that would be all about this particular tiny session of open loop and closed loop uh, uh, system let's continue with the rest part of the video coming back to the official website uh, it mentions uh, next to the bosch closed loop efi fuel injection it valves per cylinder is 4 valves uh, starting is electric start idle speed is uh, 1700 plus 200 rpm for some strange reason they have uh, put it separately it could have been i guess uh, 
नाइनटी मिनट आर पी एम सिंपली दे माइट बी समीड इग्निशन डायनेमिकली कंट्रोल्ड इंटीग्रेटेड हाई एनर्जी इग्निशन सिस्टम टू मी ट्रांसलेट्स लाइक सी डी आई विथ कंटिन्यूअस इनपुट फ्रॉम ई सी यू पावर टू वेट रेसियो इज जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर सेवन किलो वाट पर के जी दैट कॉम्प्रेशन रेसियो इज टेन पॉइंट नाइन इज टू वन नेक्स्ट इन द स्पेक लिस्ट इज एयर फिल्टर टाइप इट्स बेसिकली द ड्राई पेपर फिल्टर एंड द कूलिंग सिस्टम ऑब्वियसली इज लिक्विड कूल्ड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इट मफलर इज सिंगल पाइप सिंगल बॉडी डिजाइन दैट्स यूजल ऑफ आर सिंगल सिलेंडर इंजन फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ इट क्लच इज वेट मल्टीप्लेट एट प्लेट डिजाइन गियर बॉक्स इज सिक्स स्पीड so that beat folks i have tried to explain most of the jargons that they have used to advertise uh, the 310 rr if you ask my opinion then in my opinion uh, we all did have had a better bike but uh, apache 310 rr will go down as the first bike in the history of india with a factory fitted reverse cylinder engine although there have been many attempts by enthusiasts like uh, there have been people who have been uh, uh you can say reversing their engines block in uh, rx100 and rd350 bikes but uh, so far there had been hardly any other indian manufacturers who has done so so that's uh, one important uh, thing about this bike apart from that the performance and other things i am not really expecting that it will be spectacularly different from ktm 390 or for that it would be sub par with that cause obviously ktm 390 produces something around 43 bhp and this is going to produce uh around uh, 33.535 bhp or something like that so we got they are not really comparable but the thing is like uh, we have a better messaging in the market apart from that i guess uh, the new origin configuration would uh, be luring the new generation folks or for that matter the bike enthusiasts or collectors So that beat folks do let me know about your feedback about this video in the comment section or for that matter anything else if you want me to explain in my videos have a good day build it ride it